So we know now, artificial intelligence is when we make an object, any object, intelligent. When we add computational intelligence onto an object by either adding sensors onto them or feeding them with data. So today we are going to break down artificial intelligence into different parts to ease even more understanding. So artificial intelligence has other subsets. We hear words like machine learning and deep learning. So today we are going to look at these different parts and what they really mean. So these days, artificial intelligence is not only used by the military for weapons and stuff like that, like the general notion, right up to business decisions. There is artificial intelligence involved in it, especially under machine learning interventions. The word artificial intelligence was first coined in 1956 at the Dartmouth University in Hanover, New Hampshire, USA. Yet, before then, there were some pioneer mathematicians and logicians and computer scientists who actually conceived ideas like Alan Turing. Anybody who did computer science, who read computer science at the university, theoretical computer science knows of the Turing machine. His idea was to convert thoughts into numbers. We all know computers typically work only with numbers. Everything that gets to the computer to be processed must be converted into numbers. In best cases, zeros and ones to be interpreted and actually executed. So this brings us to the different parts of AI. First, let's break artificial intelligence into some aspects. Right now, what we have on Earth is the weak or narrow artificial intelligence. It's all about gold-oriented devices. These things are developed to carry out particular functions. The fridge, the car, the smartwatch, and stuff like that. All these intelligent things, these robots, they have particular functions, and they don't exceed these. There is also the general or the strong artificial intelligence. It doesn't exist. We see them in films where humans interact with robots, with emotions and feelings and stuff like that. That that we've not reached that stage yet and I doubt if we will reach. There is also the super artificial intelligence dealing with robots or smart devices that will outsmart humans in all senses and in all domains. So, right up to the 1980s, AI was predominantly used in the medical fields and in the military, like most of you are aware of. Yet, as of the 1980s, a new term was coined, machine learning. It's all about teaching devices how to learn by themselves. You can imagine, children go to school and they have teachers that supervise them and teach them stuff. And adults too can book lectures, or even children too, you can book online courses, self-paced courses, and you learn by yourself, you get quizzes, and you learn and get quizzes. So it's the same thing, like in implementing it for machines and devices, we teach them either by supervising them or allowing them to learn by themselves. So you see, machine learning is all about the methods created to train devices to learn by themselves. We can either supervise the machines while they learn or we let them alone by feeding data onto them and letting them learn by trial and error. This has opened a whole new dimension in our day-to-day -day activities, in business processes, in the healthcare. So with the data we create every day in big numbers, we can use machine learning methods to train this data to make better decisions for businesses. So, in 2010, another term was coined, deep learning. This was, in other words, an extension or a mastery of machine learning. These devices were being trained from big data. We create a lot of data every day and the human brain is not capable of managing a lot of information or data at once. So, using these methods to train big data helps even further. These were lay layering of data in different neurons just like the brain the human brain functions this is a whole new way of even using the data we produce in better ways in the hope that this has helped you a bit thanks for watching bye bye